move on to uh, the one day game at Marnica Oval and uh, Bob Simpson was down there enjoying all the action. It was the coming of the Comets. It was their first game in uh, Mercantile Mutual Cup and uh, they almost won it too. It was a tremendous effort by them. South, uh, South Australia batting first, 237. In fact, their batting fell away. They were looking at a bigger total than that in the early stages. Blew at 97. Adcock, he's played a couple of very impressive one day innings, this fellow. Strong hitter, 51. Ben Johnston there, 21. And uh, Higgs, now Mark Higgs, we'll speak about him in a moment. Three for 35 off his nine overs. The ACT in reply, they were pretty well placed there for a while, but all out for 226. Solway, we've heard a little about this fellow, apparently very impressive, 41. And Evans and Higgs also there in the 30s. And uh, it was Young, Brad Young, who took the bowling honours for South Australia. The margin, just 11 runs, and uh, they look like winning it for a while, Bob. Oh, they had it uh, all uh, really sewn up at one stage. Uh, four for 170 off about 38 overs was a wonderful position, doing it easy. And then, of course, pressure uh, got too much for them. Uh, they, they put pressure on themselves, and uh, when they really didn't have to, they sh should have been able to cruise to victory. But then, what, four run-outs? Yeah, the run-outs, that really killed them, wasn't it? And... Uh, it wasn't the bowlers taking the wickets. It, I guess run out, you, it, you can put it down to panic, you can put it down to good fielding, but oh, maybe in this case it's inexperience. Would that be a fair comment? I think they felt well, that they had to go a bit harder than they really needed to at that stage. This has hit very, very firmly into the gully and uh, there was really not a uh, great chance there. And he had a choice of both ends in the end. There was a muck up, they send back and yes, now, oops, sorry. And, uh, there's the result. That's a bad run out, isn't it, when you've got time to toss it to the keeper who has to move a few steps. Now this, is, you know, this man's come a long way off the fence and uh, once again, you know, uh, young Higgs at that stage has gone for it but hasn't uh, communicated with his partner at all. So there's two run outs he's been involved in. This is only quite a short throw. It's a lovely oval down there for cricket, isn't it? Uh, the Prime Minister's 11 last year has been played there this year. We'll, we'll be covering that, but it's a lovely ground. But you've got to watch your running between wicket back they go. And a direct hit this time. Close. You should say, though, the South Australians have done it well, haven't they? And they had the opportunity. They've played it perfectly. They've picked the right ends too, Bob. Mm. Uh, that's good vision from the, the fielding side to pick the right end that the guy's struggling. Oh, they might have been a bit unlucky yeah, there. I've been too. I'd like to see that slowed down. Got a nick this time. ACT would have won. Down to third man. Oh, there's another mix up. No. Oh dear. Oh, where's the coaching man? It's all it's, it's all panic there. sort of uh, driven. All these runouts. Um, they're not they're not close. They're mix ups, aren't they? It's, it's not uh, so much a quick single that hasn't quite worked or going for a second run. They, there's confusion there. The, the, the four exactly the runouts. Yes, yeah, yeah. The yeah. there's all. Uh, you know, people have been sent back. And that's one bloke you don't take on, Siddons. He's dead eye dick. Mike Valletta leading this team and uh, yeah, another close one. But uh, you, you get the feeling that uh, despite the fact that uh, big raps on Solway as a batsman, uh, Mike Valletta carries a lot of responsibility uh, in, in, uh, at the top of the order for them. Yes, he does. They've got a few experienced players around who've been is. played a lot of cricket, perhaps not first-class oh, cricket. Solway in particular is a very fine batsman. Uh, so in that regard, they've, uh, they've got it nice up the top, but in the middle lane, they really need a, a cool hand loop type bloke. You know, someone who could go in there and just uh, hold it together, as did uh, Stephen Waugh for us for so many years. Mm. And they've got a reasonable bowler too. Mark Higgs, we mentioned him. He took the, the bowling honours there, left arm spinner. And it'll be interesting to see how he comes along. But he took the bowling on us, three for 35 off his nine overs. Mark Higgs coming on from the uh, Canberra Avenue end with his left arm Chinaman. Oh, well, that's the second great catch that's been taken today. This time, Daryl McDonald is the man. The other one was taken by Paul Omar. That was quite brilliant. He had to go sideways, and the ball looked as though it was going to get past him before he could get his fingertips to it. That's beautifully done. Nathan Adcock, the man out. Big full bunger, but the catch was the thing. McDonald to his right. Catch it! Yeah! And Greg Blewett is going to be dismissed short of his hundred. Short pitch ball may well have been the wrong one, which he didn't pick, and he's hit it straight to Daryl McDonald. 
Yes, that was always going to be the danger, particularly if he played the pull shot, but he went the right way. If it was the wrong, he was hitting with the spin, but didn't keep it down. That's a big breakthrough. You know, Higgs doing a good job getting the two top scorers with his left arm googlies. Let's have a look at it. Uh, maybe not a wrong. It went straight on, but uh, hit it straight down the throat of cover. Daryl McDonald, the end of a fine innings, but a great breakthrough for the Comets. They needed that wicket. The spinner did the job. Shout there from the keeper, and uh, he's gone. So Tim Nielsen has edged one through to uh, his counterpart in the Comet side. And Brad Haddon has taken the catch. Well, they're right in at the Comets. They realise they've got a chance of dismissing the South Australians under about 2.30 here. And he tried to just work it away. It was uh, toppy, I think it went straight on and into the webbing. Look at that. Got plenty of bat on that and stuck in the webbing. Yes, Mark Higgs, three wickets in his first game. Bob, uh, what did you make of it? I was very impressed. I thought he bowled well in very, very difficult circumstances when he came on, got the wickets. He confused Blewett a couple of times with which way the ball was spinning. And when he uh, batted, he, he hits him a long way. He's very, very aggressive, very hard. Uh, went within about that far of picking up 90,000 with one, the uh, sign, went straight over the sign. <laughs> and uh, I tell you what, he's got one of the strongest throwing arms that uh, I've seen for many years. And here's the big hit. Mm. He's hit That's it. close, isn't yeah. it? He's hit it like a tracer bullet. The ACT would have celebrated that one. <laughs> Imagine how much many pizzas Mervyn could eat for that. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, I think there'd be an agreement, put it in the team fund, but uh, if you were playing your first game and you didn't have much, much money, you'd possibly think seriously about uh, taking the 90 grand and retiring, wouldn't yeah. you? So what? The attempter. <laughs> <laughs> Not too popular about all this, but uh, yeah, $90,000 would have been nice. But you say he hits it well? So he good does. all-rounder. He's, he's, yes, he's been playing in Sydney uh, grade cricket for a couple of years, and mm. uh, he's, he's very, very highly thought of. So they've got two very good young uh, players. The other lad, uh, Alan's had in uh, the under-19 team, Brad Haddon. Brad Haddon, yes. Mm. Uh, he was the captain of the under-19 team, and uh, he's a good striker of the ball and good young cricketer and highly thought of. And uh, So the ACT boys, I was very impressed with their uh, debut outing, and young Higgs, very impressive uh, all-round uh, display. So what of the ACT? I mean, this is, uh, they've only played one, one day of uh, cricket in the big time, but do you see the time, Bob, when but maybe there's a case, perhaps 10 years down the track, of inclusion in the Sheffield Shield? I would have thought so, if they can do well in this competition. What's happening now, of course, a lot of ACT players play in Sydney. Yeah. And now, uh, they're, they're, because of the, this particular competition, they're going back and playing in their own uh, uh, team. So that's great. Yeah, they've got a future. And just as Tasmania produce their own batsmen but not their own bowlers these days, uh, there's a lot of bowlers who would be perhaps not quite getting a game in some of these other states, particularly New South Wales, and they'd be tempted to go nearby to Canberra. Well, I think bowlers are short all around Australia, and uh, the ACT have got a, a huge feeder of population, not apart from Canberra itself, Queen Bee Anne, and uh, I think they've got the rights to go down to the coast and out to Wagga Wagga. That's where they're really starting to promote. So. Uh, They've got a big area which they can call on. Mervyn Hughes, he's, uh, <laughs> he's perhaps bigger than we're used to seeing Mervyn Hughes. And he was, how, what do you reckon he tips the scales at now? I think he's the fastest growing sport in Australia right <laughs> now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I reckon he's about 120 k's, but uh, he was, is loving it. He was just so nervous and so keen to do well. And uh, he was shattered when they didn't get up in the end. So Merv will do a good job for him down there. And he seemed to bowl pretty well. We saw a little bit of on the, on the telly, AV. And, uh, I would think his influence is uh, profound in that team. Oh, look, he'd be fantastic in the dressing room, keep everything calm as possible uh, with him around, but, uh, you know, they just they would just love him. And uh, I suppose it was a good sign that he was nervous, so he'd go out there and bowl well. He came back, he was, what, 21 off the first three overs and came back and got the big wicket, mm. uh, Jamie Siddons, and uh, ended up with one for 30-odd off uh, his nine overs. So. Yeah, I, I mean, he, he's just been a great performer over the years. It's just basically whether the body can stand up to uh, you know, all the games they play. Whether the knees can carry 120 kilos around for too long, uh, that's just marginally over his normal playing weight, isn't it? Yeah. Well, the last few years he was uh, pretty heavy, but uh, probably when he was at his best, just under 100 k's, yeah. Mm. OK, big move. It's good to see him back in action, and uh, well done the ACT, the Comets, the Canberra Comets. They just about got up in their first game and they're going to push a few teams in this competition. Stay with us on At The Wicket. After the break, a couple of special guests coming your way. 
That's a good hit. It's going all the way. It's going to be, oh, well, that is almost 90,000. The Mercantile Mutual sign was right in the firing line there, I reckon about a foot and a half. So near yet so far. I tell you what, that got Merv Hughes out of his seat. Have another look. Well, if it was right on line, it's even less than Tony Gregg described it. I reckon it's only a few centimetres, and it was on line. Right on line. And Higgsy's got it, his eyes on it. Oh, we can't believe it. 90,000 down the drain.